this, which should be me. Fair enough. Um, and then Discord, which should be you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Cool. Boop. Boop. Ah. Animation didn't play. Oh well. Hello and welcome to. <laughs> <laughs> Another instance of some sort of talk show. I can't function when I hear myself echo in the background. Um, <clears throat> where to begin? Last week, uh, we had a bit of a hiatus. So the week before that, is that how English works? Um, we finished off the demons <laughs> it's, been, it's been a while and a lot has happened in between then and now um yes and today we we dive into the devils mm. oh this was a journey <laughs> um how is your devil it was good very very fun. I think I've I've always kind of really uh enjoyed the devil that I've chosen, even though I have never once got to play a game with one of those in there. But like the the character design for some reason I always thought was kind of interesting. Um and I'll probably I'll explain more eventually when we're like when I'm showing it, but I, I don't know. I think I probably like it just because of stupid reasons, like because of liking other things. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I explained this to you. I explained this to you earlier, but um, mine was full of let's let's start this one way, and then finding some issue with it, and then deleting that, starting over again, because <laughs> it's <laughs> just what the program does. Um, yes. So, uh, I before I'm I'm up first this today but um even though we la even though the last time we were on we were trying to figure out what ring we were doing because the abyss works off of the layers and the devils work off of their rings um i didn't really <laughs> i didn't really like orient mine towards any sort of specific ring and even says he doesn't didn't but i I don't know. I have my doubts. We'll see. Um, <laughs> so we'll jump into mine first, and hopefully it is fast enough that the two hours and 48 minutes that I spent on it uh, doesn't seem too long. So, yeah. Start as we always do with a very simple shape. Ah, all right. Lover, the worst de uh, devil. <laughs> yeah, the flubber is my very favorite exorcism installment. That's great. <laughs> oh, it causes the most mayhem. Honestly, honestly, while promising like uh, innovation and like. Uh, so much, so much, so much goodness. It just causes the worst mayhem. That's gross. So, how did you like learning about the nine rings of hell? Um, and which, what things were you kind of drawn to in that? And what brought you to, like, this guy? Which we, I feel like, when we were, like, first starting out playing d, &D actually, like, fought a couple of these. <laughs> um... Learning about the rings was actually kind of frustrating when I was trying to um, figure out what sort of a devil I wanted to orient myself with um, in the creation of it. 
because, uh, again, in our talk before the show, uh, the description of the rings kind of hints that some devils exist at, in, in a certain ring and others just either avoid it or don't exist there, don't like to exist there. Uh, but in the description of some of the devils themselves, it that doesn't seem to be the case. So um, I just chose what I, I always kind of had in my mind that I wanted to do this thing. And so if it's not blatantly obvious by now, <clears throat> it is a lemur. Lemur. <laughs> I don't want to call it a yeah, lemur because that makes me want to think of a cute little... Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, so world. my goal right. is my goal was basically to just um, I, I just wanted to do it because it was a very simple shape, but because of its simple shape, I was able to do a bunch of like I was able to focus on like all the other stuff that's around it, so just making it as gross as possible. Um, <laughs> And you know the the lemur is a lot like the the manes or the manes that um, it it's just kind of the lowest the lowest form um, of that creature and I don't know I would always assume that it it exists everywhere because devils and demons tend to like to keep weaker things around them just to like point at the very least to just point and laugh. Um, mm -hmm. And what a lemur is, in, as description dictates, is it's like a, basically a new soul that, uh, I forget what the actual definition is. Uh, a lemur arises when a mortal soul is twisted by evil and banished to the nine hells for eternity. The lowest type of devil... They are repugnant, shapeless creatures doomed to suffer torment until they are promoted to a higher form of devil, usually an imp. Kind of wanted to do an imp, but uh, the temptation would have been too strong to just find an imp asset that already exists, because there are thousands. Um, there are so many games that have some form of imp out there that it, yeah, so I just wanted to do something that I was aware, unaware of that any game did <laughs> yet. Like, I think in all of the Baldur's Gates and all of the Champions of Norath, there's... I don't I don't think there's been a single lemur. <laughs> so, or something. It's true. Which I think is kind of like, it's fun, because a lemur, like, D&D &D mechanics-wise, like, it has a... I think it's a like a half challenge rating, maybe a fourth. Let's see. Oh no, it has a challenge rating of zero. So <laughs> it has the same like challenge rating as a commoner. Like this is like the most basic, the most like um simple of like creatures that like uh, like a peasant that became a lemur isn't actually any stronger. Uh, because of their, like, evil nature or the fact that they exist. I think the only thing is that, like, lemurs, which I think is cool, because all devils, and part of, like, I don't know, when I was reading, was, like, a big thing, is that they're immortals, as long as they're not killed in, like, in hell. <laughs> if they're killed anywhere else, they're, like, um, I guess they're, they're, like, liches in that sense, that, like, that their their body just reforms back up in hell. So the only yeah, ones that are near to that are lemurs, and then they're like the like that they, uh, they're killed at any uh, they always like reform. So it, it it's like a weird last ditch kind of thing that's kind of like neat and strange. <laughs> but like I think it would be I don't know. I've always kind of wanted to play a game, and maybe I don't know. I'm trying to avoid reading. Um, Boulder's Gate Descent into Avernus because um, that module looks way cool but I also I think sometimes I get too caught up in reading about stuff that I never get to play it and then I ruin the surprise but I think it'd be fun to like 
really go through like the ranks of like fighting lemurs and stuff and avoiding bigger devils and all that and like going through whole demon or like devil areas that are mainly just populated with like average citizens but it are these like nasty muck men yeah that's the other thing that like every once in a while just kind of sank in and then i just distracted myself with something else but just the idea that this is a medium-sized creature this is the same size as you <laughs> um where the where the mains is like a little more like you get thrown off guard because it's it's a small creature you know it's about the it's up to the height of your knee of your kneecap um it's just like and that thing looks like a norm like what a normal undead or you know demonic creature should look like but it's tiny whereas the lemur is this really gross puddle of a thing, and it's the same size as you are. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just want to point out that at this point, um, well, before, when I was messing with all the little um, keyframes, uh, I, had a, I had a basic quote-unquote walk animation, but um, I wanted it to lumber more. Um, uh, like I wanted it to move a lot less like a snail would in the sense that it has an undulation and so it's a constant movement. I wanted it to still try to have the two leg system but in the sack body and so that sort of makes it have this more worm sort of essence but in a what's it called in a horizontal <laughs> motion so it's just like this yeah. this like drag uh, walk in, uh, <laughs> drag. <laughs> Which I was actually, I, I think I achieved that. Um, there's a lot of other keyframers out there that might laugh at me, but I, I, I'm, I'm satisfied with the drag sort of feel that I got off of it. There's going to be a mm. lot of little pause moments in here just because um, at this point I'm doing just gross simulation. Like it's all simulation, so that requires baking and rendering and each of it each render probably took about like well each of these beginning renders took about like 11 like 10 to 11 minutes and then some of the renders later on those took about like 20 <laughs> so <clears throat> it was it was a sad time by the time i got to this point and it wasn't even that late too like it was maybe like 10 or something no, by this time it might have been 12. It looks like baby clay face. Or like an obese, like a uh, meatball child. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what happens when you take, when you make sack face and then you get rid of any sort of like teeth and eyes. I think, even though there have been, I think Clayface has eyes. Sometimes. He also has teeth. <laughs> Sometimes. Gross. That's why a baby. He's a baby. <laughs> he teeth. And like all babies, that, that they don't have eyes. You know, they, they just don't exist until <laughs> five. <laughs> the other thing that I was. Uh, now that the floors kind of popped up, the one thing that I remember I was a little disappointed in was um, I wanted the I wanted the goo to kind of collect and then be left behind, but mm. there is a function where you can make either the floor more adhesive or the goo more adhesive, and I didn't remember how to make how to do that with the floor at the time, and I just wanted to keep kind of moving on and it wasn't that big of a detail in the end but um if i were to if i were to have made the goo more adhesive i feel like the, the reason why i didn't do it that way was because i feel like it would have clung to the body more and have never gotten to the to the floor period so i just was like you know what if i can't do it with the floor right now then i'm just not going to worry about it <laughs> mm. I was satisfied with the goo, and I didn't want to ruin a good thing going.
it was interesting like reading about like the the nine hells and thinking about like being stuck as a lemur like i wonder if anybody that like sells their soul and stuff ever got to see a lemur and get to see what they're like what they get to turn into but it was kind of a it was an interesting thing that like if heaven doesn't like the i don't know the concept of like the christianic heaven doesn't exist this idea like i could imagine a devil doing a great job explaining like hey you get to live your uh, forever. You actually get to bind your life force with our realm and get to fight the like the holy eternal fight at keeping devil the the demons at bay from unraveling the entire multiverse. And once we win, um, we're going. To, we are like the true rulers of like the multiverse. But right now, we're just you know we're we're fighting this like the blood war but like the uh, really kind of like the war of like righteousness <laughs> like the war that's keeping everything from like falling apart and like that sounds like a, such a good sell <laughs> especially yeah. since they're like preying on like i don't know they could be preying on anybody but like preying on people that like might not have like a good strong purpose that is the 12 minutes that was sunk down into the two hours and 40 minutes that was just to get to that point um because it took about another hour or so to do the final render mm, hour <laughs> i like it i want to put it so that it loops <laughs> where's my properties Loop. gross <laughs> That is pretty gross. Good choice to in like the the red green compliment. That was accident. <laughs> I had I, I had it so that um, initially I had it so it was. Uh, let's get rid of this one. Um, the original idea in my head was to try to get it to look like the um, like its skin was kind of wet, and I didn't mm. like that just by itself. So I was like, you know what? Let's try to let's try to add some actual goo, so I don't have to try to like simulate it via texture. Like there's like literal just liquid pour, like sweat pouring off of his gross body. Um, mm -hmm. So the all the dots and stuff that popped up on him earlier in the video uh, that was supposed to try to be a particle system because I remembered there was a way to do it so that you had. Um, these meta balls, these spheres that would kind of like gloop into each other if they got too close. And that simulated either goo or sweat or like the rain droplet more or less on a window. But mm. I couldn't get that to work for some reason. So I was like, you know what, screw it. Let's just do an entire just fluid simulation. And I <laughs> wanted to kill myself. But um, then, you know, so the original thing was um, red because I wanted to stick with that idea that it's this kind of gloopy, like if you remember the, it's not really a goo creature. It was more like a, like in my child mind, I kind of labeled him as the snot dude in um, Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, yeah, he had little... He was like this little pencil thin dude, crooked nose, but he was like dripping all over the place. But it wasn't like an, an external drip. It was like him, like he was dripping. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's kind of what I wanted to go with here. But then uh, using the same texture as the as the skin or as the body underneath didn't work because it covered up too much i could you couldn't see the eyes you couldn't really see you still can't really see the mouth but at least here you can kind of see the shadow of like the underside of the upper lip a little bit mm. okay. um and then i was like well you know if i'm gonna make it a different texture i might as well go for like the grossest color that i can so because i didn't want to change the red because i wanted this sort of gross meat sort of this ground beef sort of thing but i was like all right so what's really gross and then i thought about slimer and i was like well that's a pretty good color palette so let's go let's go with that area of um expertise and then <laughs> um the two things that i kept trying to aim for when 
deleting and then re-rendering the goo was either a the idea that there's like 70 of these things like in a pit somewhere just reaching up and trying to like get that um that little mermaid sort of like sea floor of the gross little like little gross creatures the trapped souls <laughs> and mm -hmm. um the second thing that I was trying to evoke was in the final scenes of Fern Gully, you know, 1992 spoilers. Uh oh. Um, <laughs> when Nexus is smacking the tree saplings off of himself, like he's kind of goopy still. Like, even though he's like large and like skeletal and like death, um, when he mm -hmm. moves his arms, his like robes still kind of like goop away and it was just a really cool visual of just like anyways that's kind of what i wanted to go with um with the goop is just this like there's a there is a solid mass underneath but there's just this constant sweating of this like gross stuff because that's you know that's what the description wanted <laughs> it was like let's do this Let's do this, like, gross creature that you look at and you're just like, uh, I could totally put my Warhammer in that. But I don't want to get near that. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, funny, and then... like, the way that you shape, like, the eye holes, it definitely has this, it has, like, a concerned, like, <laughs> bleeding sort of eyebrows. And those like one of the few things that actually sticks out during this the entire time, which I think is awful funny. But I don't know. I would hate yeah. being this thing too. But like, be like the... please let me kill you so I can get a promotion. I really, I really don't want to be this anymore. And that's one of the nightmares of fluid simulation is you don't really have control over what is or is not affected or enveloped by the fluid itself like you just kind of have to set the the source of the fluid and then just hit mm -hmm. go and see what the result is and if you don't like mm -hmm. it you've got to unbake all that and then rebake it <laughs> so that it shows up nice in the in the final render um yeah, but the eyes, the eyes were most, like, the goo is mostly, like, the Nexus inspiration, but the eyes were really supposed to be that, like, the the scary part of, like, the help me eyes sort of thing. Even though the mouth <laughs> is totally like, I want, you know, I want what whatever's over there. But yeah, if only I had, if only I'd gotten the goo to, like, drag behind this idiot, then the, the, the drag walk would like oh it'd be so much more there but i failed in that one aspect and now the whole thing's ruined <laughs> you gotta just <laughs> throw it in the bin <laughs> shame right. but hello i know all right and so that brings us to a your devil in a three and a two and uh, let's go. <laughs> nah, so mind. I've always been interested in the bearded devil. Um and uh which are called the barbazoo uh, uh or barbatsu. And like I don't know. I, I actually I don't for the most part like how they looked in fourth edition or fifth edition. But I did like the, it was the, the, there was this gaunt craziness. And like the beard didn't seem just like, just snakes sitting on its face, even though that's kind of the description. Um, so I, uh, and you can see that I put all, all three of them kind of there. Because I think there's some merit in each of them. But my own interpretation, I do like the sentience of the face going. I do understand and use like the. The things as barbs, but I like it more as like a mane. I didn't like the separation of like, oh, I have hair and then I have sentient beard. Like, even though I know that's a thing. So I kind of made it this like crazy mane thing. But I was like playing around with different poses, trying to see which one works. And it was this one that I thought was good. And like the level of hell that I chose was Stygia, which is like 
real quick it looks like he's riding on a bicycle right now like he's a like he's a um like he's yeah, it's the like realm of bicycle like, <laughs> like he's hell's angels or something <laughs> all right sorry go on. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh demonic bicycles it's 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 pretty good like uh, that comes with your promotion you get a, a nice like beard wax kit and a bicycle <laughs> uh the the realm that i chose was like a frozen plane which i always think is an interesting depiction of hell um but something that's interesting about like this particular plane is that more than just devils actually live here actually lots of like uh of iconic ice things like yetis and polar bears and remoraz and like lots of strange things like that are on here and this oftentimes becomes like a proving ground where like uh devils are often go to like just survive out in like this winter like glacier hellscape and fight and to get powerful and strong enough so that they can like then be ready for the eternal war that's on like the first level of hell, uh, Avernus. Like the, the barbed glaive, I always thought was like a cool design. So I like, especially because I, I don't know where I read it, or maybe I was just something I made up myself, but I was like, I like every glaive is kind of special and like is a custom custom made by their like creator and so that always kind of like resonated with me in an interesting way i don't know i have fun with this like i think the pose came out pretty well it was like fun doing this like crazy aerial lie in a main thing <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Red has definitely become a part of my color set, as you guys will see me add in later. But I think it's interesting. I was, like, looking at it later, and, like, I chose a Yeti as this thing that it uh, decapitated. One, because it was, like, it gave a good contrast, because I, I keep the devil... And this is where it, like, separates, where I, like, I keep the devil, like, mostly all black, because I thought that was, like, the shadow in it. Uh shadowiness of it was a cool contrast that i thought was like fun and like originally i wanted to create like ice shards and stuff on them and like kind of make the glaive more icicly like but it, it, it made it cool. nice having this like snow landscape with like the snowy yeti or like the white yeti head but this like dark creepy thing that decapitated I'm seeing, it i'm seeing that now but my like earlier and now i can't get it out of my mind is i just see the um the green goblin's glider so it's just <laughs> you thought you killed me spider-man <laughs> <laughs> i'd watch that episode <laughs> i'd read that i don't know yeah there's a lot of little things that i keep getting reminded of other things so i just keep wanting to make reference jokes but um like a third of them, I can't remember the names of, so it's just I'm just gonna laugh at it to myself. Um, I like how the face is kind of baboony. Yeah, baboons are terrible. It's so <laughs> wonderful. And I think it like I don't know. It's even you can even feel it in like it's how the legs feel a little bit smaller and the arms are a little bit longer and it's like more like wiry power than like the kind of like just big buff gorilla power it's like a heavy metal rafiki yeah <laughs> <laughs> i would watch that one that would be pretty cool. <laughs> could you imagine the like the broadway version of that one? Oh. oh my god instead of a instead of a traditional theater it's just like a like a rock stage and a mosh pit. Yeah. <laughs> and then they do the like the screamo intro. <laughs> Audience participation. <laughs> It'd be beautiful. <laughs> I would love yeah. it. 
but I don't know. I, I had fun with this. I think this one had good bones from the beginning. Like, uh, part of what I was like complaining about last time of like this one had a better overall silhouette of like movement, whereas the other one was just like a big old mash of things. <laughs> what did you do for the last one? Oh, right. Well, to be fair, Rock Tokesh is a mash of things. <laughs> And yeah, then you decided finding to another add mash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, then you decided to throw in something else in there, so it was kind of, uh... Yeah, it was definitely a mash. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. So, do you think that the the beard is its own, like, thing? Like a... I don't know, I always want to say, like, a Medusa, but I always think that they share the same mind. Um, I want to say that the, it, it shares the same mind as a Medusa, but I want to say that, like, much like watching an octopus where all the legs seem to be grasping and moving out and, like, trying to do something a little bit, this that's how the beard goes. Mm. It's weird trying to imagine how these things fight. Like, I was trying to think about it because, like, the beard technically stings and poisons people and, like, stops them from healing. And so I really think that these creatures run, like, really choked up onto their glaive, like, and stab into things, and then just, like, get their face all up into people and give them, like, little nose, like, <laughs> and, like, well, like, the, the thing just, like, whip at them. And here's where, yeah. I, like, I thought I was done, and then I was like, you know what? <laughs> uh, like, I looked at it, like, small, and I was like, I want it, I need the background darker. And I need more red. And I want to, like, put a rim light on it. So it's going to go on for a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. And I was like, oh, and then you darkened in the background. I was like, ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> I was like, man, yeah. that must have been exactly what he thought, too. He was like, yeah, I'm going to put that in there. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> Just got to scribble it more. I like the... Uh, it, was like good. The it made me do a thing that I usually, that I know I should do, but I just don't. I don't like to, or I don't. I don't like taking the uh, like stopping the flow to do it. But like uh, at a certain point, I get kind of happy where it's at, and then I like compress the layers and uh, adjusted the overall contrast and like color balance of it, and then went back into it with the native colors, which is helpful. But it's one of those things that like when I'm like drawing on it, I think it feels good. But then as a small like Instagram. <laughs> Like, picture, it's like, oh, that doesn't, like, it needs higher contrast to actually work. I like the Instagram logo. Yeah. You know yeah. what? Um, that's what I wanted to talk about. On the beard thing, um, if you remember um, Love, Death, and Robots in... Um, shit, what was there? Uh, in Sunny's Edge... Um, even though those were more like back of the head dreadlock sort of a design, the beard mm. is sort of this can have the same concept in my mind in the sense that even though it's a beard, you know, so it could only really go down to like the chest ish area or maybe like the navel. Um, I, I don't see why not, why it can't extend further like a chameleon's tongue or something. I mean, it's a, A, it's a fantasy creature and B, it's a devil. So, <laughs> you know. It's true, and it could, but it'd be like it's it's weird thinking because even if it did stretch out, which it could, like using something that's long range like a glaive is like a little bit weird. So they would have to choke up on it just a bit. Well, yeah, because that's why that's the other thing that I wanted to like point out about that um, that combination is that, and something that bothers me with character design a little bit is that when you have you have a really cool like biological feature, but then you build up their fighting style or how they function with something that kind of contradicts that. You know, it's like I, I have this, I have this biological defense, but I'm gonna train myself to not use that whatsoever. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick up this mm -hmm. weapon and I'm gonna train myself to use this, this long range weapon and keep people away from me when my biggest strengths are when I'm in a bear hug with someone and I'm able to just kind of like <laughs> gross at them. Right. It's kind of like, 
I think one of those that was like really frustrating early on when we were doing the Bahir and like reading up on it, it was just like, it's shot like lightning in a like a line for 30, like, uh, like 30 feet. Except it can move like sixty or eighty feet really quick, and then it can make multiple claw attacks. Like, so it's like really doing a little lightning thing does less damage than it just like bum rushing you and clawing the shit out of you. Like, lightning was more like a vestigial kind of surprise. I did it. I could see that if they lowered its health point total, then that way it's kind of like it favors the lightning blast, and the claw thing is more or less like a. It's like an anteater, you know? Like, they don't... They're not aggressive creatures. But if you if you try to, like... If you try to fight with one, it'll do the bear hug on you. And just kill you. Yeah. <laughs> I like how yours... Like, it's like it's almost like a... Whenever you do one of the more evil aligned characters, it's always like a... It's like a coin toss of whether or not it's gonna look... Um, something that you're like kind of dissatisfied with or it looks like it like an album cover yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i was happy with it it's funny enough when it's a little bit further it looks like a like a i don't know a death metal like santa thing <laughs> Are you, i don't know the red and white just too much but I'm excited, and I'm excited kind of for the, like the next creature that I'm going to do in this area. Um, yes, yes. Yeah, so just as a reminder, um, we just kind of started off with the like lower echelon of devils, and much like the demons that we did before, um, they sort of have like a like a tiered hierarchy. It's it's a little it's a little more vague than the the demons in as far as their descriptions go but um i mean they definitely have like their upper echelon which are the arch devils but um like everything below that is kind of like i guess i could put it here but sometimes it's like maybe below this one <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, at least as far as i was reading um and it was kind of it, it was weird because they like they really stress upon like there's like a really strict hierarchy of how it, how, like it goes but like but then they go talk about the different levels and stuff of hell and it's not like the hierarchy doesn't go from like you're in like the the bottom tier and then you get moved up in it it's just like i don't know this like this tier is all about like making money and making packs and deals and like hiding all these packs and deals so they actually need a lot of imps uh but like but then like a third level or like a, a cr3 like the um uh the barbazoo or the bearded devil they're like frontline infantry so once you get promoted you actually get demoted down back to avernus to like go fight in the front lines of war again and once you like get promoted again you get moved back to a different like department like i don't know i guess it, it could be some really beautiful like poetic i don't know uh design of like the frustratingness of bureaucracy <laughs> of like you got a promotion except now you bring transferred to a different department like enjoy doing something different like uh, i guess so yeah and even in that description um i remember one passage saying that um some devils like try their hardest to try to get as far away from um avernus as possible and then others try their hardest to get closer to the action <laughs> so they could be like ah, i want to fight and uh, do everything <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it's weird and the, like i don't know i think monsters and D and D has such a way of creating very monolithic designs for things as if like everything always follows this like how it has been and it always is so it very like there's very little like sense of personality of like yeah i'm a bearded devil but what i'm really good at is um is baking pies my pies are to die for like <laughs> no like no all bearded devils are infantrymen and really belligerent and jerks like the end like oh okay like what did you like why are you in hell uh because of my sinful pies but now now it is bloodlust 
<laughs> that I put it in my pockets. Like, promoted, <laughs> it's going to be something completely different. Have no control over that. Uh, and it, it's interesting too how the 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 base monster manual, without diving into any of the other like um, any of the, uh, the other books, like they all focus on devils in their rings, where when they usually pop up for like a DM's player, um, it's it's like they they they're disguised or they pop up and they want to make a deal. <laughs> You know, or they've already made a deal, and usually they've already made a deal, and it's the player's job to just kind of kill that devil or send him back to hell. But mm -hmm. I've always, as a DM, wanted to give them the deals. You know, it's like, well, you could try to fight this. Is a bearded devil like a CR two or something? CR five, three, um, somewhere in between. <laughs> um, <laughs> Like you could, you could, yeah, sure, you could fight this, or tell you what, <laughs> the next, the next, the next door that you break a lockpick on, uh, it'll just open for you, but <laughs> for a price. Which is so really kind of funny, because <laughs> like, uh, Stygia, like the the ice realm that uh, that I chose, it's arch. Or one of its like arch devils, the arch devil that kind of controls it, is perpetually stuck in a glacier, but still manages to run their realm. Uh, but part of their like their job, as dictated by like the big boss of all of hell, is to give people packs of escaping from their bonds. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like perfect for this character. I'm like, hey, how you doing? Are you stuck in a spot? Well, you can get out of it. Oh, hey, boy, you could kill me. Sure, whatever. But you know you. You're going to get stuck somewhere, and you're going to want to get out. Just shows up in the material plane as a cube of ice with an eyeball in it, and then just a pad of paper and a pen that floats around. He just writes it out. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, because like, I've seen it... I've seen versions of the packs done and i always think it's such a fun concept but usually you know people just throw a devil in there as like a combat encounter but it'd just be so fun to just have this like scroll that has like the 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 pact itself so that you know that this is this is a devil pact because that's a part of the contract you know you gotta you gotta know what you're getting into and then just not just one benefit, but just a list of bullet points about like you know, um, you can you can summon however many imps. You can turn someone into a thing. You can, you know, you can revive a dude. At the very bottom, it's like, but <laughs> you know, for each one that you do, here's you know here's the here's all the prices for the stuff. If you use only one, then it's not that bad. Like you might lose some hair for like three days if you use two <laughs> though uh then your eyesight's gonna start kind of getting weak and if you use three well maybe your firstborn will kind of be my food <laughs> you know it just kind of progressively gets worse and worse and worse the more mm -hmm. i always like that idea um let's see I'm really satisfied with your image, and I can't imagine you would want to do anything differently with it. Um, I yeah, I wish that like the the head, the the like the bloody head, I kind of spent a little bit more time on. But it was also like I didn't like I'm happy with how it was, but it could have been different playing around trying to put like the snowy iciness on them as well. As if the realm had some sort of effect, but oh, that's what I, I didn't ask. do much changes. I kind of wanted to put like scars and stuff all over this character, in the sense that it's just been proving itself in uh, in this realm this entire time. Would that be a hard thing to do in the format that you chose to do it in? Uh, it's just it's small, and doing small detailed work sometimes uh, kind of. It draws attention to just like the the loose 
detail than I did in that area in the first place. So right. it it might not be worth it, or it might not be seen, or it might like just draw attention to areas that wasn't important. I don't know. Because it's I don't know, like I I'm trying to imagine unless you did like a really like gnarly scar or something, like um my imagine my imagination wants to just show me that it would just look like more shading <laughs> attempts. Yeah. So those were kind of like little ideas ish, but eh. what would you go for for yours? Just making sure that that bottoms, uh, like that stuff, glooped up on the on um, the ground. Yeah, because you know, like I said before, because it kind of carpets everything around the base, um, it kind of gets rid of my my drag walking motion. Uh -huh. That's kind of disappointing. Um, what I tried to do earlier, uh, the other thing that I wanted to, that I forgot to point out was the thing that that I tried to do earlier was um, weight, yeah, weight paint um, the face a bit so that in the hopes that the um, the fluid simulation would occur in certain areas and not others, and mm -hmm. I, I did something wrong or I didn't set something and it didn't work, but. Uh, <laughs> Um, the idea mm. was that it was going to just kind of droop around the eyes and like maybe down the face a little bit so you get kind of that like gross like eh. but you still see the mouth you know and the eyes aren't all that covered up and so you just get this waterfall from the from the base or from the top of its head down yeah I wonder which I, I'm not too sure uh, sure how you do it if you could have like done different sources of where the water are so, like, the head is dripping at a rate of, like, you know, uh, two ounces. But, like, right below where the head is, the, like, neck and chest area is dripping at, like, a couple gallons. But, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's possible. In order to do that, off the top of my head, the way that I would think to do that is to <laughs> tediously chop the head into, like, three different sections make each section its own object, and then have each of those objects be a fluid source. Mm. But I okay. think if I were to try to do all that and then hit the render button, I think my computer would shut down. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, you just got to keep in mind about your computer's limitations, especially with 3D gross things mm. yeah. mm. uh what are the top three mm, i don't know if that's a real question or not but i'm gonna try it uh what are the top three like most used techniques that you did for yours like for mine it was fluid simulation and then it was just sort of like minor mesh manipulation um other than that it was just moving <laughs> like I, it wasn't really a technique but other than that it's just moving little dials here and there to make sure that the texture looks the way that i want it to i guess mine would be creating a dynamic silhouette is like the first one of like if there's a clear motion from its like spine and chest down into its legs and then there's like these strong curving diagonals that flow from the, um, like, across the shoulder blades uh, and into the arm, but also the glaive, and then the, 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 the land follows that, and then it's punctuated through with that tail to tie in those two things, so that, like, that, that composition was very clear. And then from there, it was trying to get, like, my lights and darks really obvious, so that, like, one leg would fall back, and then it would reinforce the overall silhouette, and then, I don't know, a third thing was know, using red <laughs> to highlight areas without, like, going too crazy. Yeah, I think one of the, one of the things that you're kind of downplaying a little bit is there's, um, God, how do I, how do I say this? I can't, curse you virtual thing, I can't, like, point at it. Um, <laughs> if you look... If you look at the images, like, far left end, there's, like, the 
kind of half the the cut off peak of one um, stalagmite, and then the next peak over. At the very base of that, there's just a little bit of like a blurred sort of like what's behind that or underneath that ice, and that's the one that that's the peak that kind of gets my mind out of the green goblin's glider and makes it seem mm. more like ice to me. Um, and you do that kind of in like the very in the very um, in the very foremost foreground stalagmite. That sounds like a rep that sounds like repetition. Um, <laughs> but um, the one that's kind of a little more back into the left or I guess to our right, but to the images left, um, mm. that's the one that solidifies it as ground and not not spider-man's revenge <laughs> yeah and th those ones are hard trying to imagine and play with um like reflective and also transparent surfaces is so weird where it's like it would be sometimes i'm a little jealous that you have things that do that do render it because then it would like it would be reflecting things and then i could see what it's actually reflecting and be like oh okay i we can like play with these and move stuff but in this one, it's just like, I don't know. I'm just making it up. Like, and I'm guessing at things. So I did it a little bit uh, here and there, trying to think about where things are moving and overlapping. But sometimes, like, I mean, you could think it's reflecting that, but it's actually reflecting something from very somewhere else. Um, and then the same in those, like, those ones that you pointed out in the front, those, um, those parts that are jutting forward, like what it's reflecting or where it's creating darkness from actually it could be from something completely different. We have no clue <laughs> what those are uh, are responding to. It's just the shadow of where the ice just gets that much thicker. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but to that credit of the fact that I can just like hit a button and see where like and see where the reflections are. Um, I just want to remind people that that in order to get that result, it does take time. Like my computer's kind of in the low end of the mid range category. So it takes like 20 minutes just to get to that. Um, yeah. But the difference between just a person who's trying to teach themselves and like a person who actually gets paid for these, for these kind of things, um, they often do have some sort of training, like even over there. So there's a lot less guesswork in like i kind of know where i want my lamp to be and then um what makes this reflection so that when i hit that render i'm a lot closer to the mark and there's a lot less delete re-render delete again re-render you know try to mm. guesswork where you know where you want your your uh <laughs> detail levels to be to get that that nice transparency that reflection from where it comes from Yeah, and that that makes sense. I'm like so, and that's one of those things that they say often, and you don't appreciate it until you start doing it. Of that, like, you need to practice a whole lot because practicing what it really does is it helps you learn how to internalize a lot of those processes. Just like I don't know how we always complained about like in like grade school and stuff about like taking math and like you need to show your work like eventually and we're always mad like i do it all in my head and that's true that's what we want we want people to do it in their head but to do it in your head you have to do it right a bunch of times before that and eventually you can just start doing stuff in your head uh and i think it's always it's hard on an art level because so many people think that you don't do it if they don't see you do it and it's like no i do it i do it a lot i just it's just <laughs> happening other in other places other times i've moved around all those things but in my head i just didn't move them around because it'd take time and i'd have to render it every single time i move it really angry. although I want you guys to... did see me sketch out several different poses beforehand uh but what you didn't see me do is like look at a bunch of references before uh nor like i don't know i did a couple of drawings of ice not for this one specifically but in another thing just because I was trying to figure out how ice works. Um, the one thing that I wanted to do was, and I didn't have it because I did it, you know, last night, and I didn't want to bother anyone. But um, 
one thing that I that I wanted to do didn't have access to was to ask someone else, usually you, um, what do you imagine the skin texture of a lemur to be? So like in D and D Beyond and just in the Monster Manual in general, um, they just kind of look like clay. Mm. But mm -hmm. you know, I don't really imagine clay to be all that like gross and repulsive. So, what do you imagine <laughs> would would have been a texture that I could have aimed for? Honestly, I I kind of liked where it was before, where it was like it was like that like shiny flubber kind of grossness what i think of when i remember seeing this back in like 3.5 and maybe even fourth edition was I, I kept on thinking of like blood and plasma that it was somehow like since it was this sense of like a new soul that has been like recruited into hell that it was like this it was you if your bones and skin and meat had been peeled away. And it was just like uh, essence and blood in a way. And you're trying to like form yourself into like and rebuild all the muscle and bone again. Got it. But I think clay is a good a good analogy. But I, I just I remember there were like a shininess and I remember redness. And so for me it was always like there was like a you were somewhere in between, like, spirit and, like, blood. <laughs> Wet meat. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I changed it to this texture from that more wet-looking red because I thought that that previous red looked too much like, like, uh, like a jelly, you know? Yeah, but, it was kind of cute. Yeah trying to go for like a more bloody meat texture might have been better all right cool it's funny it's front arm in the rendering that you have it it looks very like blur like it's so it looks soft like it'd be a really nice couch <laughs> I, wanted it to like be a, I wanted it to be a club fist so Part of the reason why those why those eye ridges stick out also is because one is like huge. It's this it's this grapefruit sized thing because I wanted it to have this very sort of like hunchback of Notre Dame esque kind of like like malformations mm -hmm. and stuff, and then just have club fist and then like normal hand. Whatever, it's a blob creature. <laughs> I'm over it. I don't know. I kept like I was like fantasizing about i guess and thinking like about like the how they were describing the nine hells and stuff um and trying to think of like if it exists not in the christianic version of like heaven and hell like what is this place what is this place that calls itself hell you know that like uh and like how do they like really think about it and like why would anybody do this um and there is that like greed size that uh, that like it was you do you have no clue what's going on there and like something just offered you power and you're like cool I'll take power and they're like cool enjoy power and then when you die you get to find out what your new home is like but like I was wondering like what people would like like if they knew but there was this kind of interesting thing of like thinking of like if I had, like was recruited into this and bound my life force to this whole different plane that was like promised to always reform me. Like as long as I lived forever and fought the war trying to stop the abyss from taking over and unraveling the, the multiverse. Like there was something kind of cool thinking about like being this moldable lemur and like trying to warp myself, trying to build up the strength and power of my own personality and soul and energy to like make a club fist I'm like cool sweet this is this is nasty but eventually i'm gonna learn how to shape this into something even better and like and i'm gonna like squish and warp my me and like i wasn't a sculptor um but you know what i'm gonna have that perfect face eventually i'm going to learn how to do this Part and of i was like eternal torment yeah 
I think that would be kind of like a, a weird sort of, it was a weird sort of thing of trying to think of like, how would you be okay with what you're doing? Like, because they, I don't know, in the things that I was reading, there was this like rhetoric that um, Asmodeus like uh, believes that like uh, he and the rest of the demons and hell itself are the good guys in the story of the universe. Like, really, they're the only things that are, like, keeping everything from falling apart. And that uh, Celestia or any of the other realms are just lazy. And if they were, like, and are enjoying the peace, that they're not. So, like, I don't know. Even at a lower level, I thought it was kind of a cool thing of, like, okay, I'm going to, like, yeah, right now I'm going to make Meat Fist. But eventually I'm going to learn how to control all my plasma being so that I can reshape myself into whatever I need to be into a, you know, a, an imp so I can go fly around and spy on things <laughs> into a succubus so I can just be sexy and go out on, uh, out on town every once in a while. Like, <laughs> Yeah. D and D put an interesting twist on the heaven V hell sort of thing in the sense that they're actually kind of working together, but it's more or less like a, like a rivalry, like, it's a group project, but one group's just not putting in as much work as the other group. And it's actually these two factors against the abyss. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, but it, it's, it's a refreshing take on the, like, we are angels. We're here to kill the devils. We're devils. We're here to kill the angels and recruit more people to our cause. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm, we're going to leave it up there on that note. Um, next time we do a stronger devil. So, <laughs> uh, thank you for tuning in. And if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, be sure to catch us live on Sundays at 2 p.m. on twitch.tv slash foxstar. That's F O X S T A R R underscore. The underscore is important. Um, and with that, laters. Bye.